Good morning, Valley Pastor Dave here. It's Monday morning, April the 20th, and I hope your week is off to a good start. Uh, a lot of us got the week off to a good start by worshiping together yesterday. I hope you were one of them. If you weren't able to uh, uh, watch our time of worship online yesterday, I do encourage you to, to go to our church website, look it up. Uh, you can watch it anytime today. And uh, thank you to everyone who sent us a note to, to let us know you were tuned in and to uh, share prayer requests and to make comments. It's so good for us to be able to have a sense of who's watching, who's listening, who's connected. Uh, so also let me just say, uh, it's never been easier to share your church with your friends and family and neighbors than it is right now. Uh, the idea that you could just take a link and put it in an email and say, hey, I'd like to invite you to participate in the life of my church and just share that. That's a that's a great thing you could do right now. I'm sure uh, most of us know somebody who could be encouraged with some Christian fellowship and some nourishment, nourishment from God's word. So, hey, this morning my question for you is this. Uh, what is most essential to you today and this week? Uh, what is the most essential thing in your life uh, one of the news uh, sources that I look at most days uh, is uh, their their number one story today was this. Let me see if I can hold it up there. One big thing, fights rise over what's essential. <laughs> Apparently, uh, uh, when, when the governments say only essential businesses can stay open, it's interesting that everyone from uh, gun stores, golf courses, landscape companies, uh, uh, I, I read the Bath and Body store uh, said they were essential to stay open because they sell soap and hand sanitizer. Uh, Hobby Lobby was essential because you could buy things to help you make masks. Uh, you know, I get it, everybody wants to get rolling, everybody wants to stay open, and who can blame them? Uh, I'd like to make a case that uh, churches should get open again because I can't think of anything more essential than faith and Christian community, uh, which incidentally never seems to come up on any of these news lists uh, when we talk about essential services. Uh, but uh, thankfully, uh, God has been helping us uh, keep things rolling and working online and staying in touch. Even though we can't assemble together, it's been great to uh, see how many of you uh, see faith and church community as essential. And we're doing our best as a church ministry team to keep it rolling. And uh, of course, none of that would be to any avail if it weren't for you guys being so plugged in and participating. So thanks for that. Uh, because faith and community are certainly, uh, I consider them to be essential to my life. Um, you know, when I read that headline today and uh, seeing a, a whole article about people making a case for what's essential, it made me think of when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness in Matthew chapter four. There he was, in isolation, right? He's completely alone. He doesn't have anybody around. He's fasting, so he's going without food, and he's in the wilderness. He's without shelter. And Satan tempts him and says, hey, you know, you're you're really hungry right now. You're, you're really alone. Wouldn't, wouldn't some nice warm bread be good about now? Why don't you turn some of these stones into bread? And Jesus says to Satan, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. You've probably heard that, man does not live by bread alone. But Jesus wasn't just saying that uh, man needs more than bread. He was saying the most essential thing to him was the truth that came from God himself and that he needed to realize that if everything was taken away from him, if he was in isolation, if he was hungry, if he was suffering, that the thing he needed most was 
God's presence and God's truth, that that's the essential thing he needed. Now, Jesus wasn't just being profound and, and improvising that answer when Satan tempted him. He was actually quoting from the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy and where Jesus was uh, fasting in the wilderness for 40 days, it's uh, not surprising that when he was tempted, he remembered uh, the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness that he, that the uh, children of Israel uh, endured in the Old Testament. And so when Jesus uh, rebukes Satan with a quote from the Old Testament, he chooses a quote from Deuteronomy chapter 8. And that chapter starts with these words, be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that God, that the Lord God promised on oath to your forefathers. Now, think of that. Be careful to walk in consistency with what God is commanding. And why? So that you may live and increase and enter and possess the land God has promised. Uh, I think most of us uh, would like to live and increase and enter and possess the land God has promised for us. And so, so Moses starts these words by saying, be careful, be careful. In other words, it's not going to just happen. You have to you have to focus, you have to think, you have to be intentional. And then verse two says this, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way. So he starts with, be careful to observe the commands of the Lord. The next verse, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. Ooh, that's interesting. He says that sometimes that God allows us to wander in a wilderness. He allows us uh, to be humbled and realize we don't know how to fix everything. He lets us experience need because he is uh, exposing what we really believe is most essential. God, in these times of want and wonder, God is checking us and helping us check ourselves to see what do we consider to be really the most essential. Verse three says this, God humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Moses says that God has used times of want and wandering and wondering to humble us and to make us ask ourselves and to demonstrate to God what we consider to be essential. He says that even in your hunger, God fed you with something you couldn't even describe what it was. In fact, the word manna means, if you translate it, it means, what is it? Uh, I think that when you look back over your shoulder and you look at times of want, times of mystery, times of loss, times of suffering, once you make it through and you look back, even when you realize the Lord has provided and cared for you, it's hard, you know, you, you might, uh, maybe you don't say, what is it, like the word manna, but maybe you say, how is it? How did God bring me through that? Well, he brings us through when we realize that he is our rock. He is our hope. And so the most essential thing, I would argue, friends, is that we seek God with our whole hearts and that we realize uh, that as we stumble through day by day, as we look forward and wonder what is going to happen, how is this all going to pan out, how is this all going to shake down, that uh, 
while we realize we can't answer all those questions, we can answer this question. What is most essential to me? And I hope your faith, I hope that God, I hope that the words of Jesus, the promises of Jesus, the example of Jesus, I hope that the community of Jesus is proving to be the most valuable thing in your life. You know, if everything was taken away from us, uh, if, if we lost it all, if the economy completely tanks, if our debts overcome us, if our, if our health is lost, what is the thing that cannot be taken away? Our faith, our God, his promise. That's what's most essential. In the New Testament, there's a story of Jesus and his disciples going to the home of Mary and Martha. And uh, Martha was uh, very busy being a great host. And uh, it says that uh, Martha was opening the home and working hard to serve the needs of her guests. And it says that her sister, Mary, sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. And so Martha, distracted by all the preparations that had to be made, this is uh, the end of chapter 10 in the book of Luke. Martha, distracted by all the preparations she had made, came to Jesus and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell Mary to help me. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Friends, what matters most to you? I hope it's sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to him. All right, let's have a great week as God's people. Uh, youth, I think you've got some stuff going on tonight. There's prayer time with Dewey on Wednesday night. There is the Moth Study, the Soul Sisters. Go to the website, uh, Flourish Group, all kinds of uh, around the word in 30 weeks. That's back on again for this Wednesday. Lots of programs to get involved with online. Go to ballycc.org. And uh, we look forward to fellowshipping with you this week. If you do have a need or do have a comment or do have a suggestion for something we need to be doing as a church, please don't hesitate to uh, send me a note. You can send a note to D Burkham, D-B-U-R-K-U-M at valleycc.org and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, let me pray. God, thank you for your word. Help us to realize what's most essential in our lives and help us to sit at the feet of Jesus and to realize if all else fails, if everything falls away, that the essential thing that we need for life, we have. It's in his name we pray. Amen. All right. The Lord be with you. Be the church. <laughs>